in my capacity as the Minister of International Trade, Industry, Commerce and Consumer Affairs, I am once again elated to make a statement in relation to the observance of World Consumer Rights Day. Since being first introduced in 1983 by Consumers International, World Consumer Rights Day is celebrated annually on March the 15th. The celebration of World Consumer Rights Day provides a platform for agencies and organizations involved in the promotion and protection of the rights of consumer to highlight the importance of the consumer rights and to advocate for changes to policies which are intertwined with consumer transactions. In the year 2020, we approached the celebration of World Consumer Rights Day on the theme, the sustainable consumer. This theme provides the opportunity for consumer protection agencies worldwide to highlight the overwhelming need for protecting our planet and providing fair social conditions for current and future generations. Sustainable consumption aims to increase resource efficiency and fair trade while helping to alleviate poverty while allowing everyone to enjoy a high quality of life. Business innovation and enterprise provide the fuel for economic growth, employment and social progress. Additionally, through increased choice and the availability of affordable products and services, business plays an essential role in helping people improve their daily lives. Many companies are now coming to the realization that this is just one side of the equation. And while our activities may in fact generate more value for customers, employees, shareholders, citizens and consumers, those activities are also making demands on the environment. As economic growth accelerates, the signals are becoming clear that the Earth's natural resources and ecosystems will not support the way in which we conduct business or the business as usual model for much longer. Climate change is already having a direct impact on business operations. Water stress, energy security, and access to raw materials are affecting competitiveness as well as are the rising costs of waste disposal and pollution. The idea of a one planet economy sums up the challenge. If replicated worldwide, it is estimated that current patterns of Western consumption and production would require that we have at least three planets worth of resources to sustain us. Therefore, it is critical that we harness ingenuity, technological innovation and behavioral change in ways that will enable us to make the transition to meeting our economic and social goals within the capacity of our planet. For business, this means making a shift to deliver new products and services with lower environmental impact across the production and life cycle. It is also about making it easy for customers and consumers to make more sustainable choices in relation to purchases. Some international companies have started this journey 
bringing forward new business models that generate value through the use of less resources. However, we as a government recognize that if this is to become the benchmark for future commercial growth and competitiveness, we need to start a dialogue within the business community, within our local companies, and with various government agencies about the changes that we must make and how we best get there. One area which has been garnering interest across the globe in recent years is the impact of single-use plastics. And while plastics has many valuable uses, we have become addicted to the single-use plastics or disposable plastics while ignoring the severe environmental consequences which these items pose. According to consumer research market company Euromonitor International, one million plastic drinking bottles are purchased every single minute, while up to five trillion single-use plastic bags are used worldwide every year. In total, half of all plastics produced is designed to be used only once and then discarded. Although there is no official government policy in the Federation that regulates the disposal of single-use plastics, I must take time to applaud all private companies and individuals who have taken a positive stance on attempting to reduce the impact which plastic material pose on our environment and landfill. In recent times, there has been a thrust to have some single-use plastic containers and bottles collected from homes and recycled overseas, as opposed to continuing the process of having the majority of these items disposed of within our landfill, which is operated by the Solid Waste Management Corporation. I also use this opportunity to commend our public servants who are undertaking a proactive and careful assessment of how our national policy in regard to single-use plastics can promote more sustainable practices while fostering continued economic growth and development. In September 2019, the government in collaboration with the Sinkitz Electricity Company Limited Skellig, signed an agreement to undertake the largest solar generation and energy storage project ever to be built in the Caribbean. Through collaboration with one of the world's leading energy storage companies, La Clanche, based in Switzerland. This initiative is being undertaken to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels, which will ultimately reduce our greenhouse emissions. Additionally, citizens and residents will gain access to a clean, reliable source of energy with a significant fixed cost savings compared to the current diesel generated power, which is currently being utilized. This new clean energy generation project is envisaged to provide between 25 to 30 percent of the current power generation needs for the island of St. Kitts. These initiatives illustrate the positive strides being made in an effort to position our country as a sustainable island state. In today's highly globalized technology-driven world economy, the Kittishan consumer is savvy, well-informed, and wields enormous power. Through access to consumer rights information in other domains, and through the advocacy, lobbying, and information dissemination by the Consumer Affairs Department, the consumer is increasingly enjoying the exercise of his basic rights 
and is prepared to demand that those rights be honored. No longer are our people prepared to accept bad service from utility companies or faulty products which could cause injury. And therefore, the Consumer Affairs Department will continue to highlight the negative impacts on our communities, which could arise and result in poor or non-existent mechanisms for consumer protection. The Ministry of International Trade, Industry, Commerce and Consumer Affairs place a very high priority on the overall satisfaction of the condition consumer. And therefore, in 2019, the Consumer Affairs Department finalized the redrafting process, which would facilitate the adoption of the CARICOM Consumers Protection Bill. The provision of the harmonized consumer protection legislation is a requirement on the Article 184 of the revised Treaty of Shagaramas. And so the government will endeavor to have the CARICOM Consumer Protection Bill adopted within 2020. Having completed this initiative, it would transition the Federation into the modern era of consumer protection offering the department greater legislative scope while concurrently providing field officers the ability to issue citations for infractions. Consumer education is a critical mandate of the department and remains a priority in ensuring consumers are properly informed about their rights and their obligations under the current consumer protection legislation. Consumer issues are multifaceted and therefore special attention must be given to the raising the level of public awareness in relation to the consequences of a business model which result in adverse effects for our environment and by extension the planet. In addition we must highlight the benefits of sustainable food and drink choices, where individuals rely less on the consumption of meat products and instead choose organically produced, locally sourced, seasonal produce. We as a department must also emphasize and place emphasis on the use of sustainable material in the construction of homes, while also making these homes energy efficient and less susceptible to energy wastage. For example, through the use of energy efficient appliances and bulbs. At the Consumer Affairs Department, we will continue to provide information to better protect consumers in the Federation as they undertake transactions in the marketplace while lending support to the formulation of public policy which will support innovation of consumer goods to facilitate the creation of sustainable goods. In closing, I wish to make a strong appeal to you, the consuming public, to shoulder your share of the responsibility in bringing about much needed improvements in how we do business in St. Kitts and Nevis as we often overlook the immense power that we have collectively as consumers. For any further information about the work of the Department of Consumer Affairs and its mandate in the area of consumer protection, please feel free to contact us at email address consumeraffairs.skn at gmail.com or view our Facebook page at the Sinkits Consumer Affairs Department. Thank you for listening.